Kimberly Stamatellis, and I'm here today with Dr. Jean Lorenzen, a doctor of internal medicine practicing in West Des Moines, Iowa. And any of you who have read the book, The Compassionate Lawyer, know that I talked about my very compassionate doctor, Dr. Lorenzen, who helped me uh, really change the way I did things with my mind, body, and spirit. And so I've asked Dr. Lorenzen to join us today to talk a little bit about what other lawyers might do to benefit from her knowledge and wisdom. So Dr. Lorenzen, thank you so much for being here today. Well, Cam, it's a pleasure to be here. I thank you for the opportunity. You know, it's my life passion to try to help people in any way that I can, sharing useful information to make their lives better, um, which makes the rest of our lives better, especially with you attorneys who impact so many lives. If you're at your best, then that gets passed on to the rest of us, too. Well, thank you. It, it certainly uh, has really been helpful to me in my legal practice. And I guess the first question I would have, uh, have you treated other lawyers or treated many lawyers? It's a very good question. Um, I have treated many lawyers in my years as a practicing physician. It seems as though attorneys are a professional group or an organization of individuals that seem to have quite a few um, health issues, not necessarily disease states per se, but they seem to suffer from a variety of different um, stress-related maladies. So what kind of things do you see with the doctors that come into your um, examining room? Uh, the lawyers... Um, I'm sorry, the doc uh, The lawyers. The lawyers that I see would typically uh, present with a variety of symptoms that could be attributed to many conditions such as perhaps fatigue, um, perhaps trouble with minor trouble with memory and cognitive function, uh, frequently difficulties with sleep. That's a, a very common problem. Um, I think the fatigue and the sleep issue and perhaps um, uh, the cognitive um, function not being quite as good as it should be just are basically stress-related symptoms uh, that are so common. And so with all the different things that you could prescribe to lawyers that are suffering in the ways that you've just now mentioned, are there three quintessential uh, pearls of wisdom that you could perhaps give us to be able to guide our lives in a more healthy endeavor? Isolating it down to three is a difficult task, but I would say that um, basically the first thing would probably be nutrition. And when I say nutrition, I don't mean that you have to follow all the food rules, um, which are constantly changing. Um, and are based on various uh, people's truths, but I would say that getting nutrition or fuel into your body is an absolute because what people often fail to remember is that the body is a living dynamic organism and without proper fuel it is just not going to function and literally you truly are what you eat. And the body is so very grateful for even minor attempts at trying to give it a little bit of nutrition or help it along a bit, uh, that you don't have to make it perfect. So don't go, in other words, all day without eating anything except your coffee mug and a donut, for example. Um, frequently people will go until they're hungry, they don't stop for breakfast, they'll grab a coffee, they might grab some kind of a starchy snack, and then they start to become so tired and sluggish that they can't hardly function, so then they grab another coffee, maybe some more sugar-coated snacks or uh, pastries, and they have a, a temporary rush of energy and followed by another crash. This goes on all day long, and at the end of the day, they may have their only good meal, and it may be devoid of some of the important nutrients that people really need. If this goes on day after day, then it doesn't take too much imagination to figure out that after a while you're past the empty mark on your tank. And this can cause symptoms such as irritability, foggy thinking, fatigue, muscle and joint pain, and restlessness, inability to sleep. I think those last things that you've mentioned, pretty much all of my colleagues and I have had those symptoms, and I guess we wouldn't think it would be related to food. Um, the food that you eat does matter, and again, I, I want to stress, it does not have to be a perfect diet, because I think a lot of us professionals are, we think it's the all or nothing phenomenon. If we're going to do something, by golly, we're going to do it right, or we're not going to do it at all. Mm -hmm. And so we think that we have to do it perfectly, and that's just not true. Um, if you make sure that each meal that you consume or snack contains some protein, um, 
some type of carbohydrate if you need something for energy. And, you know, fatty acids are usually also contained in with the proteins. That kind of a combination is ideal. So the protein somewhere upwards to possibly 25, 30% or roughly think of it as a third of the meal or snack that you're going to have. Um, and then the carbohydrate should be as close to its natural state as possible. So by that I mean if you're going to eat um, a vegetable, that it should be in its whole form. So celery sticks, carrots, um, salad, um, even a, a sweet potato, anything like that, but not processed. Or it could be a piece of fruit. If you're going to eat the fruit, however, make sure that you're eating some protein with it. So um, it might be some cheese with the apple, it might be some raw nuts with the apple, which would contain both your protein and your fat and your carbohydrate all together. Um, it might be that you have a hard boiled egg, for example. If that's all that you have, that could be your first meal. You could take that with you. You could eat it when you got to work. You can keep those in your refrigerator. Um, that's a perfect food because it has the protein and the fatty acids and it causes very little disturbance in a person's blood sugar. Whereas if a person were to eat primarily a carbohydrate, particularly a starchy carbohydrate, you would have a great rise in your blood sugar um, followed by a drop in your blood sugar approximately an hour and a half later, which would lead to symptoms such as fatigue and lethargy. So let's be uh, creative and say if those of us lawyers that are watching out there wanted to uh, stock their fridge at the office or keep a healthy eating environment at the law firm, what would you advise them to keep stocked or how, how would you advise them to go about doing that? That's a great question, Kim, and this is um, somewhat on a pattern of what I do in my own office because I figured out many, many years ago that if I do not have these foods in my office, I am going to order out or I'm going to go to the vending machine or any fast, quick nutrient fix because the body is saying we need something to eat and we need it now and you're going to default to the, to the easiest to come by piece of food in the office and it's usually something that's not very nutritious. So um, keeping in mind that we talked about the proteins and the fats, um, you could keep some real peanut butter in the office. Um, and I don't mean the ones that contain sugar or trans fats, so something that just contains ground peanuts basically and salt if you'd like. That's one easy portable um, protein with fatty acid source and fiber that you can keep. There's also any other kind of tree nuts. They come as nut butters. So almond butter, cashew butter, macadamia nut butter, um, those can store indefinitely in the refrigerator. Um, so I would keep some of those. Um, as far as your whole carbohydrates, I find it very handy to buy a container of pre-washed organic greens if you can find them in, in the uh, city areas. Those are very easy to come by. Um, they're pre-washed, they come in a big container, or you can get whatever size obviously you like. And if you put that in the refrigerator at the beginning of the week, you can add to it your sources of protein, like your hard-boiled egg, like some tuna or salmon or chicken, or even some pieces of roast turkey, or anything that you might have happened to have left over from home, or something that you store in your refrigerator. You can keep olives in there, you can keep feta cheese in your refrigerator, you can keep some fruit. Sometimes I'll put um, some protein, a piece of fish, uh, and some fruit on my salad. And I'll take these mixed salad greens, and that will last me all week. And I keep a dressing in the refrigerator. So you've basically got a made-to-order salad in your refrigerator. You could bring something different for the protein source if you wanted to. Or when you're shopping once a week, simply get some protein sources that can store. Um, these are very easy to come by now. And based on your personal preferences, you could just pick some of those up. You've got an instant salad. You don't have to wash or chop anything. And that makes a very nice meal. You could also keep um, some hard cheeses in your refrigerator. Um, you could keep some whole grain crackers or whatever you'd prefer as far as the fat for a snack. Um, if, you, if you don't let yourself get terribly hungry, you won't feel the need to eat the high starch, high sugar foods. You know, I'm thinking of the kinds of things that we typically keep in our law offices now. And there's lots of pop and there's the donuts that somebody brought in. And I'm also thinking about um, our staff people. We may have them running down to the courthouse or running other errands for us. And uh, you know, I'm not so sure it's um, 
not compassionate to ask those law clerks, can they make a run to the Whole Foods market and get some healthy things to keep in the fridge or, or other support staff? And I'm also thinking how compassionate the lawyer would be to say to the staff, hey, we're always going to provide some organic greens here if you want to bring your tuna fish or your chicken or your uh, other accoutrements, if you will, from home that you want to put on the salad, we'll always provide those greens. And I'm thinking that the energy level in the law office, if we stock the fridge with some apples or some nuts and nut butters like you're talking about, uh, that energy level for the whole office could really uh, heighten. That's a great idea. Not only is that helping everyone directly in your office, but you're also teaching. And as a lawyer, you're also a teacher. And it's one thing to say what one should do, but it's another to actually go out and do it. So in asking your staff to go to one of the uh, area grocery stores and buy some actual Whole Foods, whether it be that store or the, the Whole Foods section of one of the local grocery stores um, in one of the communities, what you're doing is saying we value our health and we put it as a priority so that we're asking you, our staff, to go purchase these items instead of the food just being an afterthought. And um, also, you're teaching, and if your clients come in and, and um, if someone needs a snack, instead of offering them a pop, you would have your tea, or perhaps you would have um, some healthy snack foods there. And, and it doesn't have to be anything too over the top. It could just be plain, basic, whole food. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned pop and water. And, and could you address, like, coffee? Uh, you know, we like to drink tanks of coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, is coffee healthy? Can we have it in our office? Creamers, sugars? What would you suggest about that? Uh, those types of refreshments. I've never asked people to give up their coffee because I Yay, would, I would never want to be without <laughs> mine. Um, most studies show that um, reasonable amounts of coffee, two or three cups a day, which I think most of us probably exceed, but uh, reasonable amounts of coffee may be actually beneficial. Um, if you're going to offer coffee, I would suggest that for the uh, sugars and creamers, if um, if you're going to use those, that you try sticking with um, more natural products. I would really rather see someone use real sugar than artificial sweeteners. If they don't care for the real sugar or don't want it, a great um, option would be stevia or some type of stevia product that comes as a liquid or a powder, which is a natural sweetener. I usually like to offer those for sweeteners and for creamers. I really prefer the traditional half and half that you can buy in little containers and keep in your office um, because the artificial creamers, again, are artificial. And I think uh, the body is probably far better prepared to deal with something that it recognizes. Well, it's interesting. I'm guessing that um, some of my colleagues, as they hear this, are going, oh, one more thing I have to put on my list. One more thing I have to take care of. I know when you and I first met and you were beginning to tell me about these very important things, I, I started to feel like, I can't do that. It's too much. I don't want one more list of things mm -hmm. to do. But So could you give some real quick, easy first steps mm -hmm. for people that want to really take charge of their health um, and incorporate some of these things that you've mentioned? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, usually you begin, like you say, with a very simple program, something that you know that you can do. It, it needs to be kept simple or you will not do it. And if something causes more stress and it resolves, then it is not a good program. So begin by always making sure that the first thing you eat contains a good deal of protein because that determines how your blood sugar and energy levels are going to be the entire rest of the day. So always do that. That would be a first. And you can either bring like a hard boiled egg or the nut butters or perhaps even a, a good quality protein shake, either pre-mixed or something that you buy the powder and you make it yourself either before you leave home in a shaker cup or in a bullet or a blender. Um, that can actually be um, consumed even in your vehicle. So instead of a quick drive through through Starbucks to pick up a muffin and mm -hmm. all of that, uh, putting something in one of those things that you shake that has yes. that little uh, silver ball in it, shaking it up and taking it and sipping it on the road to the courthouse or to the office, wherever you're going, uh, mm -hmm. that has some protein in it. That is an excellent choice. And if you keep several of these items around your house, like a container of protein powder and one of those little blender cups, it's a very quick thing to put a scoop of the protein powder in either some coconut water if you don't want milk or milk. 
Um, the coconut water is one of my personal favorites because it does have potassium in it. It's um, going to be hypoallergenic for most people. Um, you don't see people sensitive to coconut water um, very often. Um, very few calories, but it is good for you. It really has very little flavor, so whatever the flavor of the protein powder, that's what it tastes like. Um, that is a two-minute deal. You put it in the car, you drive down the road, and that, it's just as simple as that. Well, and I think one of the other things that you mentioned to me was the possibility of getting some of those um, little meals, like the Cashy brand meals or some of the other healthier meals, uh, because, you know, sometimes we don't have time to really make anything and, and getting everything is overwhelming. And so having some of those that you can just throw into the microwave and um, have in a few minutes can be quite healthy. Is that, is that correct? That's a very good point because we always have to have a plan B and probably a plan C for most of us professionals. Um, there are frozen meals. They certainly do not have to be organic. I like um, organic products when it comes to uh, produce particularly, but um, there are several brands. One of them is Akashi that um, many grocery stores carry in the freezer section, and there's a large variety of those to choose from. And I like to keep one or two of those in reserve in the freezer just in case I have nothing else or um, I don't have the two minutes to put together my salad or for some reason I've run out of ingredients for the salad or I just plain don't want that. So the default is going to be to throw the kashi meal in the freezer, uh, rather in the microwave, and that's what I'm going to eat. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's an excellent choice. And if you buy these things ahead of time when you're not in a rush and you have a list, and if you find particular products that you like, put them on a little shopping list and put it on your refrigerator with a magnet, and then you'll know, okay, well, I like this one, I didn't like that one. And so if you always keep some of those things stocked up, then you'll have what you need in a pinch. And I think what you said earlier about us being perfectionists is really important because if we embark on this and then we stumble and end up picking a drive, picking up a drive-through or something, we might think, oh, I can't do that. Um, but one of the things you told me that I think was very helpful and easy to implement was to eat two green things a day. And that was harder than it sounds. For one thing, I wasn't that friendly with many green things. Uh, but it was a wonderful opportunity for me to have an achievable goal. So if by dinner I hadn't had two green things, I might eat some broccoli and a salad, or uh, it, it compelled me to eat green things earlier on in the day. And uh, green things, are they magical in some way? Um, you might call them magical in some way. Green things are very important um, because they um, are vegetables, and most green things also contain... Uh, multitude of nutrients, including magnesium, which, by the way, when we're stressed out and consume caffeine, we lose a lot of that magnesium, so we need more. And the green things also are alkalinizing. In other words, they help our body's acid-base balance. They give us our antioxidants. Um, they help our liver to function well, and they're extremely important for protecting us from environmental damage. So yes, the two green things a day is an excellent goal. Not to say that the vegetables we eat all need to be green, but if you say by the end of the day you're going to consume two green vegetables, then you'll probably also naturally consume some other vegetables with that or at least get in the habit of actually putting vegetables in your diet. Excellent. Well, are there any other nutri... I had asked you for three tips, mm -hmm. and this has been one excellent tip, mm -hmm. and I think what we'll do is save the other two tips for another time. But in summary, is there anything else you'd like to tell the lawyers out there about what they can do to enhance their health through good nutrition? There are a lot of things. Keeping it simple probably is the most difficult thing. The, I think the main thing is, is that first meal, whatever and whenever it is, make certain that it contains a goodly amount of protein. And when I say goodly amount, I'm talking somewhere between 30 and 40 grams, which is a fair amount, uh, for your first meal. And do not go for hours without eating. And certainly when you're hungry, do not grab for the caffeine and the sugar as a pick-me-up or a fill-in substitute for a meal because you will end up worse off an hour and a half later than you were to start with. Well, thank you. Once again, this has been Dr. Jean Lorenzen, who has talked to us about how we as attorneys can be compassionate towards ourselves and enhance our health through good nutrition. Thank, thank you, Dr. Lorenzen. Thank you, Kim. It was a pleasure.